Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Here to work on another problem as part of the Harvard Square MTEL Math Workshop series. We're going to do number 13 on the General Curriculum Math Subtest 03. This is for a test for elementary school teachers and special education teachers K through 8 that are, have to take this test for licensing. Um, but this is also a really good problem for teachers uh, preparing to take uh, the 53, the 47, the 51, and even the 09, just for, uh, you know, strategy-wise. So first I'm going to read the problem. Number 13, given P times N equals 150, where P is a prime number and N is a natural number, which of the following must be true? And then it gives us a whole series of answers about P being a factor of either 10 or 15, you know, 10 is a factor of N, N is a factor of either 10 or 15, 15 is a factor of n. Now, if you're like most people, you just I just read that problem and you're like, what the... <laughs> so let's clarify some things. It's really, really important because there's a lot of, a lot of stuff here. So maybe the, the first thing we should do is just uh, clarify p and n. These are two numbers. And when you see them, they're variables, but they're two, they represent two numbers. And when they're connected with each other, it means you're multiplying them. So I, sum, I have some value p, and I have some value n, and I multiply them together and get 150. Now it tells us p here is a prime number. So what is prime? A prime number is any number that's divisible by 1 and itself, and only 1 in itself. So we did this before. 2 is prime, 3 is prime. 5 is prime. These are because they're only divisible by 1 and itself. And we call these factors. It only has 1 in itself as factors. So all these numbers here, 2, 3, 5, they only have two factors, 1 in themselves. All right? So P is a prime number, and N is a natural number. What's a natural number? Think of a natural number as starting with 1, 2, 3, these are our counting numbers, um, like 1, 2, and 3. They're divisible by 1 with no remainder. If we were talking about natural numbers and we wanted to uh, include the um, 0, we would actually now start thinking about this as whole numbers. This can go on and on with vocabulary, but for now, when you think of natural numbers, just think of 1, 2, 3, and so on. Whole numbers, or, or pardon me, numbers on the number line, that you, uh, you'd use, they're going to all be positive and all divisible by zero. All right. So we have a prime number. And I multiply it by a natural number. And I get 150. What could that prime number be? Let's say you got lucky. Let's say you're like, hey, I know. I know what it could be. I think it's a 2. So let's say, you, so 2 times what gets 150? 75. This is true. This is right. P is, two, this 2 is prime and 75 is a natural number. So that's definitely one of your P's and one of your N's. But are there any others? Okay, maybe you say, uh, what about 3? Three? 3 times what? 3 times what natural number? 3 times 50 gets me 150. So I got my prime and another natural number. Anything else? Anything else? Well, let's say you wanted to be 100% sure on what all the distinct prime numbers are. You take your 150, and you find out what the distinct prime numbers are by doing the prime factorization. I mean, that's the, most, that's the best way to be absolutely 100% sure on your prime numbers. And look, I find out that it's going to have a 2, it's going to have a 3, and it's going to have a 5. Now I'm 100% sure that there are only three distinct prime numbers here, 2, 3, and 5. So 5 is the last prime number, it could be, and uh, that would have to be 30. Now what I suggest you do is every time you see a P, and above it write 2, 3, and 5. And every time you see an N, you're not going to be able to do this on the test because now it's computer-based, but I think it's a good practice to do in your mind and in your notes. Every time I see N, I'm going to think 30, you know, 50, 75. 
Okay, every time I see those values, all right, so I have another n here. So I'm going to think 30, I'm doing that. I'm just, why am I so lazy? <laughs> every time I see n, I write down 30, 50, 75. Now I can analyze this problem a little bit better. Let's start with, uh, let's start with A. A is the correct answer, by the way. Sorry to spoil it for you. I just hate to like. I mean, it's the correct answer. And let's see why. Well, 2, 3, and 5 um, are factors of either 10 or 15. The either or means it only has to work for one or both. So 2 is a factor of 10. 3 is a factor of 15. And 5 is a factor of 10 and 15. So either or allows me to uh, only have one, both, you know, or, you know, some combination. So P is the right answer. Now, why is B, C, and D wrong? Got to answer this before we continue. Well, if I think about 10 is a factor of 30, this is true. 10 is a factor of 30. And 10 is a factor of 50, too. So everything looks right. Why isn't it right? Well, it's not a factor of 75, is it? I don't think so. Remember, a factor is a number that goes in evenly to another number. In this case, 10 does not go into 75 evenly without any remainder. So that one doesn't work for that reason. 15 is a factor of 30. Yep, that works. It's a factor of 75. Remember, it, it goes into 75 evenly without there being a remainder. But it doesn't go into 50. So we cross that one off. Okay. Now, is 30, 15, 75 a factor of either 10 or 15? Think about that. 30, is that even possible? Think, what's wrong with that? I know some of you are like saying, of course it works. And some of you are saying, I'm not so sure. Well, the key is this word factor. If it had said multiple, 30, 50, 75 is either a multiple or 10 or, fi 10 or 15, then it would work. But because it says factor, it doesn't make any sense. The key is multiple. If it had said a multiple of 10, 15, and remember, multiples are like this. These are the multiples of 10. These are the multiples of 15. And what I'm getting at is, if there was multiple there, it would make sense, but it's not. So your answer here is A. I use this strategy. I made a little chart here that helped me fill out this, uh, fill out what my prime numbers were. I took my time. I made sure that I, I broke down 150 into all, into all its primes. So I found out the distinct prime numbers that, you know, that are going to multiply to get me my 150. That way, I know there's only three distinct primes: the three, the two, three, and five. And this helped me with the organization of the problem and eventually to solve the problem. Okay team, I hope you found this helpful. Keep on sending your questions. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. There's a, there are two day workshops that go on to help teachers prepare to pass the general curriculum, the 53, the 47, the 09, and the 51 MTEL Math exams. Check one of them out, or uh, you can go to GoMath and find out more about the one-to-one -one tutoring if you need some extra help. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.